Hey, so welcome back, and it's another daily code problem. So today it's called target sum. So this is a medium level dynamic programming problem where essentially you're just given an array called nums here as well as a target. And so this type of problem is basically you want to find out all the different kind of expressions or really combinations of these numbers that can build to this target. Um, but the only thing that you're really doing here is you're just taking these numbers and flipping their signs. And so you can see there can be just sets of combinations of um, variances of which ones you're making a, a positive sign and which ones you're making a negative sign. So to do this, the first thing that I thought of, and this is what I typically do, is try to decide what the recursive relationship will look like. And so basically, you just want to have some pointer that's pointing to whatever current number you're considering. And so initially, we're gonna have that index set to zero, which is saying, okay, what are we uh, going to uh, set this sign as? And so you, you can go down kind of two paths here. Um, you can either make this a positive one, or you can make it like a negative one. And so from here, then you can kind of increase uh, this index to then be considering uh, basically at index one here, and then you're looking at, okay, do I want to basically add one here to get to two, or do I want to subtract one by making this a negative sign to basically bring us back to a sum of zero? And so if we keep expanding here, so now we're at index two, so we're considering uh, this number here, we can once again either decide to do plus one, which will bring from two to three, or you could say subtract one, uh, which is minus one by negating this and then bring it back to two. Uh, but basically you just want to sum up all the possible ways where basically you're reaching um, that target number of three and well, this is actually a uh, one case there. So to kind of translate this into an actual uh, coded solution, uh, typically what you wanna do for dynamic programming is you wanna define some recursive function here. So this will be a top-down kind of memoization approach so once again, we need to define like what index we're currently pointing at, as well as like what is the current running number that we have. And so why don't we kind of start at our target. So when we reach zero, that's kind of our base case and we propagate that answer up. And so initially we're gonna be looking at the first value, right? And deciding, do I want to negate this or make it a, a positive uh, sign? But we wanna start with this target uh, number that we're trying to achieve. And so we'll just specify that as n and i in our function here. And so once again, because this is recursive in nature, you need kind of that base case. And so that's gonna be okay if our uh, index is basically equal to the length of our numbers, then naturally we've kind of hit the last number um, in this array and we don't have anything else to consider. And so in that case, okay, let's return true or return like true as in this is a possible combination um, if we've actually hit zero. Um, you could also do this inverted. So you could say, okay, um, we could set this as zero and once this is equal to, or return true if we hit our target, but I kind of like uh, starting at our target and going downward. So um, why don't we return one to represent this is one possible combination uh, as long as our current number is basically equal to zero. Otherwise, um, let's just return zero because this isn't a possible uh, combination. Um, otherwise, then we want to make those two different choices that I talked about. And so that's just going to be basically two different uh, recursive calls here to this function. But for each one, we're gonna want to move on to the next number, of course. But one of them will be, okay, why don't we um, use the positive version of this, right? And so that would be whatever number is at i, and we're basically adding uh, whatever, current, whatever number we're currently at. Or we can do the opposite of, okay, um, why don't we uh, do i plus one, and then basically negate it. Now I think I just realized uh, what I did wrong here. And so because we're adding here, uh, we don't really want to do that in this case, uh, since we're going top down. So why don't we uh, instead, or actually this should work, we cache it. Oh, uh, 
and we want to add here because we're doing positives. Oh, operand type. Ah, because we need nums at the current index. Looks good. And success. So this is one possible um, path. What I was kind of slipping up there is that you can also do it uh, this way where, okay, why don't we specify it as zero? And then if we hit our target, then this should also uh, work here. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. So just a second ago, I thought the math wasn't working out, but you can do it both ways. So uh, yeah, in terms of time and space complexity, um, they're going to be uh, the same thing in this case, where essentially you're dealing with an O of basically your target number uh, multiplied by basically the length of this nums array. And that's because in the worst case, um, this nums array is going to be just a whole bunch of set of ones. And so you're going to have to iterate through all those ones, but then also um, you'll be only like subtracting one each iteration. So it's going to go all the way to basically uh, whatever this target size is. Okay, so yeah, I hope this helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.